Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. This week we are continuing our series about coming out and we're specifically focusing on those who come out a little bit later in life, usually after they have established themselves, established a relationship, their long-term relationship, a marriage, co-parenting, some sort of confirmation that they fit into the cishet world and then realize that they don't. Before we get too far into that, I need to ask you to subscribe, to give me a comment or maybe like the video ring the bell so you get notifications and share it with someone that you think could use the information. What many of us are definitely seeing right now, while there's no actual statistics on the topic, is we are definitely seeing a rise in the number of people who have later in life after establishing a relationship or establishing their family have come out and changed how they present themselves to people, how they know themselves to be, whatever it is that they've changed, so much so that it needs to make some sort of a change in their lives. That can be a very different situation than when you are coming out and revealing who you are when it's just you and then you have to deal with the impact of your family and that sort of thing, but it's just you you're responsible for in the end. When we're talking about somebody who has a committed relationship with another adult or someone who has children that know them in a certain way, it's a whole other layer of what that looks like for them. For a lot of people, it was the pandemic that sort of started them on that journey of self-discovery. Being forced to be in close proximity to someone else or to their family as a whole does tend to make people think very seriously about who they are and who they understand themselves to be. And for a lot of people, that led them to a realization that they are either not cisgender, maybe not straight, maybe both. And in that, they're forced to make some decisions. For the person who's already established a relationship, the extra layer is that how do my decisions to pursue a different type of life than what I assumed I was gonna have. How did those decisions impact the people who I'm responsible to in this family that I have created? So for many people, not all, but many, it starts with an idea, a thought, a fantasy, a dream. Sometimes it might be something that they have known for a while or thought for a while, but not really been able to put their finger on or understand. They just know there's something different, something has shifted, for them in their relationship. Once the realization comes to pass, typically they will go and find somebody to talk to about it. A lot of times people feel very isolated though in the fact that if they tell people, then it becomes real. There are Facebook groups and other online communities that can help people to sort of work through what that means for them. Once you've worked through what it means for you, you have the added layer of what does it mean for your loved one? What does it mean for your husband, for your wife, for... What does it mean for the person to whom you have committed yourself if they don't then fit the bill of who you think you're probably most attracted to? One of the things that I see a lot of is where people are in a committed relationship, they don't wanna make things change, they're worried about it's just a phase, okay? That's our first question. What if it's just a phase? Typically, when people get to the point where they're asking that question, they're already past the phase line. Everyone is different. This is just a typical response. Does not mean that's how it is. If you think it might just be a phase, and if you do not plan to change anything about your life as it stands now, then one idea would be you can write it out and see if it goes away. That's an acceptable response. Not everybody wants to do that. A lot of times though, people don't wanna do that because they know it's not going to. Another question people typically ask ask and it's similar to whether or not it's just a phase, but it's how do I know this is real? And there's no real answer to that. I can't tell someone how they know for sure their attraction is real. But the other side of it is how did you know for sure you were attracted to the person to whom you are currently committed? Did you wonder when you committed yourself to this person, when you engaged in your relationship with this person, did you wonder if it was a phase? The question, how do I know this isn't a phase or how do I know this is real, largely comes from heteronormativity and compulsory heterosexuality. We don't ask those questions when we are in a cishet relationship because that's the way it's supposed to be. And so those questions don't come up. The doubting of yourself and thinking it's a phase or thinking it's going to change, that's internalized homophobia. That is you disliking or being afraid of that part of you that may turn out to be an instrumental part of you. 
I tend to advocate to people when they ask that question to do a little bit of investigating to see if that is actually coming from compet or internalized homophobia or something else that's making them wonder if this idea is temporary. So say you've done your homework, you know this is not temporary, now you have some decisions to make. Do you leave your current partner? Do you ask if they are open to opening the relationship up? Do they talk about consensual non-monogamy or polyamory? I've done a video about this. I encourage you to check it out. I'll go ahead and link it here. This is where we get into some dangerous waters because consensual non-monogamy is different from being bi, gay, lesbian, or trans. Being polyamorous, being into polygamy, wanting to engage in consensual non-monogamy is very much a personal choice thing, and it is something that has to be entered into by all parties with enthusiastic consent. What I see more often are, for instance, women who are understanding their attraction to other women and go to husband or long-term boyfriend and say, I wanna check this out and explore this part of me, and they say, okay, Hey, go ahead and do it. I'll be here when you get back. Not necessarily because they're giving their enthusiastic consent, but because they either are not threatened by it because it's another woman, or they don't believe the person will leave, which is also pretty undermining, or they're not sure what else to do. It could legitimately be any of the three of those, but it tends to be one of those three. When one partner is interested in exploring this other part of them, and the other partner's like, well, I don't want to lose you, so here's the parameters that I'm going to put on. Opening your relationship up to bringing in others is completely valid as long as everyone is on the same page. When they're not, that's when things can get very problematic. I also know of couples where one partner brings the information to the other one and says, you know what, I think I might be bi. You know what, I think I'm pansexual. I want to figure this part out about me. And the other partner goes, I've been thinking the same thing about myself. In which case, you also have some options. Do you each go and find other relationships and sever the relationship between the two of you? Do you keep the relationship between the two of you and explore on a non-committed way other options also? and explore those parts of you. Some of the hardest situations come when there is no compromise to be made, where there's no discussion between the partners, and one of them has to give up exploring this option, or they have to give up the relationship. And typically, if you have to get the relationship, depending on your family and your friends and that sort of thing, if you are the one that is leaving and you are the one who is coming out as you are leaving, often you are the one who loses because people feel badly for your partner or for your children. And even though it could be a very, very positive interaction and a positive separating, it gets this feeling about it that you've done something wrong. And I hate that because you haven't done anything wrong by being true to who you are. It's not necessarily your fault you didn't know that before. And it's not your fault that you feel the need to follow that now. It's also not a bad thing if you decide you don't need to follow it. You're okay with understanding that part of your identity and that's where you're at. All of these things are fine. That's the purpose of this video is to help you to understand every relationship has options. Every relationship has or should have mutually agreed upon rules. Some of them are unwritten, some of them are written. If you are entering into a period of discovery about who each of you are or who one of you is, I would encourage you to actually physically write some of those rules down so you are both on the same page. It is likely that understanding who you are later in life will lead to some hurt for some people. And I wish it wasn't that way. But we live in a world that is filled with the heteronormativity that we see every day. It is not someone's fault that that was what was around them and that they were not given the language or the space to discover that about themselves before they got into this long-term relationship. Okay, part two. This is for the people who are being told that their loved one, that their partner is discovering new things about themselves, which they do not maybe fit the bill for. I need you to understand something very, very, very honestly. This is not about you. It can feel like it's about you. It can hurt like it's about you. And it can feel like this person's doing it to you. Sometimes you can feel like you weren't enough. Sometimes you can feel like they're just making it up. You can be like, I've been with this person for how long? I 
I know who you are, even if you are confused right now. What I was talking about in the first half about one partner saying, oh, as long as I'm there, you can explore this. Wow, is that a dangerous path to tread? And it's a dangerous thing to suggest unless you honestly think that you could be okay with sharing your partner with someone else. Some people are okay with that. Awesome. If you're not, it is going to lead to more hurt and more pain for everybody. Understanding that it is not about you and seeking your own counsel, your own therapy, your own option and opportunity to work out what it brings up in you is going to be essential to you being able to make it through this in one piece and on the other side, finding a part of you that maybe you didn't know existed. So I know that this and a couple of my other videos have really had a very feminine slant to it and I accept that and I, I own that. But I think it's really important to recognize the gender inequality that we have here because men, typically, if they were to discover this new part of themselves, they tend to suffer a lot less societal guilt for engaging in who they know themselves to be now than a woman would. Because you see a woman as abandoning and leaving her family, and you see the man as fulfilling who he is. That's how our society as a whole tends to see it, which puts the onus then on the woman in the relationship to know who they are from the very beginning. And y'all, we change. All of us change all of the time. And if we do not leave opportunity and space for each other to change in little and big ways, I would encourage you to take another look at your relationship because we should always be changing and evolving and learning about ourselves. And sometimes there are some seasons where we grow together. There are some seasons where we don't grow together. That's called life. But when someone comes to a startling realization about their lives as the person who is supposed Supporting that other person who's supposed to be loving to that person and committed to that person asking for honest conversation asking for it within boundaries not bringing it up every five seconds having dedicated time to sit down and talk about things having your own place to get your own advice and work out your own issues there those are the ways that everyone comes out of this healthy those are the ways that no matter where everyone ends up we're all growing as humans. It is incredibly hard to see your life change when it has nothing to do with you or anything that you know to be about yourself. It is about the other person. That's incredibly hard. In a perfect world, I'd love to see support groups and other things that are for partners who are dealing with their partner's changing understanding of themselves. We don't have many of them right now, but creating one would be great. There's a lot of things that you can do in order to support your partner, or it's also acceptable for you to pull back and say, I understand. This is what you're working through. I don't want to be a part of it. So if you need the space to do that, then we need to figure out a way to make that happen. And also create the space in our relationship. Because that is not a place I can emotionally go with you. That's fair for you to say. Honestly, non-vindictively, that's fair. In a lot of these situations, it comes down to people taking the time to discover where their frustration comes from, where their fear comes from, where their sadness and hurt comes from. It does not mark a negative in you when your partner comes to realize a new thing about them. That does not mean you were lacking something. It means there was a part of them that they didn't know until now, and now they're trying to engage that part of themselves. So that's about it for this week. Stay tuned next week for a 10 year flashback to how we dealt with queer issues in therapy 10 years ago versus how we were dealing with it today. And I can't wait to see you then. Until then, have a great week. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks.